Today we are going to discuss the much feared flyaways that seem to pollute the internet with horror stories and graphic crash scenes. When we first heard about phantom flyaways, I jumped on the internet and was horrified at what I saw. In fact, I questioned what we'd even bought and was anxious that we might lose the phantom or even worse, a camera. I spoke with DJI and searched the internet extensively and found that there seemed to be two things in common with nearly 80% of all flyaways. The first one was recent firmware upgrades and the second was pilot error. We believe the chance of a flyaway is minimal. In fact, in our opinion, the phantoms are reliable, very reliable in fact, if set up properly. So we have compiled a simple checklist that we hope will minimise any chance of a flyaway for you. We'll assume some level of knowledge on the setup, so I won't go into actual how-tos, and anything I talk about can be found on the DJI website as a simple tutorial if required. OK, so number one is compass calibration. Your compass may need to be reset at times. If it starts doing weird things and flying off on a tangent when moving forward or weird little circles, it's hunting for north and it needs to be reset. When setting it, try and pick a place that is interference free, like a park or a field somewhere. Stay away from EMI or EMF when doing it like wireless interference, power lines, transformers or even an enclosed suburban yard or concrete car park that's laden with metal reinforcement bars underneath. And don't sit the phantom next to your car speakers on the way to the park or have your mobile phone in the other hand at the same time. Any magnetic interference will disturb the phantom. Number two is of course making sure your home point is set correctly. Again, see the DJI videos on their website if you're unclear about setting the home position. And they are different for the Phantom 1 and the Phantom 2. The failsafe home point is a fantastic feature of the Phantoms that is really reliable if set properly. We use ours all the time as a homing mechanism or a lazy fly home after filming. But you must set a good and solid home position. Not from tucked away behind obstacles where she never got a good bearing or from a high rise building balcony or a moving boat as watching your phantom land on the top of a high-rise roof at full speed or into the sea where you once were just isn't really that cool. So don't rush your takeoffs, enjoy them. I think rush takeoffs with partially set home positions account for a huge number of flyaways. If it doesn't go into green mode, start again. Turn it off and move your home position somewhere else if you need to. Close enough just isn't good enough. It must find all the satellites to set the GPS point and the phantom too seems to take quite a while at times, so be patient. Number three is flying near electromagnetic interference. This can upset the phantoms at times. So if you see power lines, phone repeaters, radio transmitters or the like, just stay away. Generally the unit should go into fail safe if you lose the control link. So if your home position is not right, well, it's anyone's guess where it's going to go to. Hence you have a flyaway. But occasionally, the interference that has upset your phantom may use the same frequency as the actual phantom controller, which is also not that cool as the phantom will think it's getting its signal updates from you, but of course it's not. And the new signal it's found could be telling it to go flat out forward, or maybe even to China. Even though I don't believe this is a reason for the majority of flyaways, DJI have recognised that this can pose a problem at times and have fixed this in updates. So make sure you use the latest firmware, which features a 10 second user check-in. I know as a safety precaution, DJI recommend that you don't use things like smartphones to control your GoPro underneath a Phantom, but we actually do it all the time. We've been doing it for a long time. We've never had any issues whatsoever. And I only mention that to strengthen the fact that it's not always interference that causes uh, these flyaways in our opinion. And of course, use good quality batteries and keep them fresh in your controller. Something that seems to be often overlooked. It shouldn't cause a flyaway, but it may weaken your signal when competing against other interference sources. Things like out of range, batteries, interference should all trigger the go home fail safe mode. But of course if your home point is wrong, well, again, you have a flyaway in your hands. The Phantom 2 definitely has some going home issues, but more on that in another video. So the final thing is firmware upgrades. They are really important, but this is where a lot of it seems to go wrong. If you don't know what you're doing, don't do it. Get your local Phantom shop techo to do it for you. They will know what updates and IMU alignments etc that need to be carried out. And if you can't get it to them, post it. And remember, when you do a firmware update or you get it back from the dealer, it's back to the start again. Set your compass position again and work through your flight checklist again and again. If you are super paranoid, you could fit a cheap GPS tracker on your Phantom or get a fully monitored system online. They're pretty cheap on places like eBay. The Phantoms are reliable and very responsive units, so if it's not behaving, trust your instincts and bring it home and start again. Or maybe move somewhere else. 
obviously firmware upgrades could change this information at any time and anything that we offer is only our personal experience. So if we discover a change to flying procedures we'll try and modify this video accordingly. So please check out our other phantom tips, tricks and comparisons and happy flying.